Madam Shepherson, at the last COS, I spoke about how social impact bonds could help drive outcomes-based social policies in Singapore, such as reducing recidivism among ex-offenders. Pay for Success Contracting, or PSFs, and Social Impact Bonds, or SIBs, have been growing worldwide since 2010. One estimate has identified over 40 SIB and PSF projects worldwide in 2015, spanning subject areas like early childhood education, healthcare, and recidivism. In Israel, a SIB is underway to help prevent pre-diabetics from contracting diabetes. The NUS School of Public Health estimates that diabetes could cost Singapore $2.5 billion a year by 2050, not to mention the cost of human suffering. In Singapore, MOH could explore launching a SIB to raise funds for reliable NGO partners who can then work with pre-diabetics and diabetics to improve health indicators like blood sugar levels and emergency hospitalization events. Philanthropic donors, foundations, and so on could buy the bond. Such NGOs could then use the bond proceeds to fund programs to help at-risk individuals manage their diets, for example. The state would redeem the bond and pay the donors only if outcomes are achieved, which makes for better use of state monies. NGOs may be better placed than state entities to dream up and execute creative ideas that can nudge behavioral change in the face of entrenched habits, thus solving tricky social problems. I hope that MOH will look into the possibility of launching a social impact bond or SIB or PSF initiative to work with NGOs over the social challenge of diabetes. And then I thank Mr. Leon Pereira for his suggestion on using social impact bonds or SIBs to fund efforts by NGOs to tackle diabetes. NGOs and VWOs are important partners for MOH. In our war on diabetes, we work with the Diabetic Society of Singapore, or DSS, and touch community services in areas such as diabetes education, patient and caregiver support, and disease management. We work with and support the work of NGOs in different ways, such as funding them to provide services, extending seed funding for them to experiment with new ideas, and collaborating with them through our regional health systems. For SIPs, some observers have noted the benefits, including those which Mr. Pereira highlighted. Others saw downsides, such as the complex negotiations among multiple parties, resulting in delays and high transaction costs, and possible diversion of attention and resources away from important causes which are less measurable and harder to achieve outcomes. In some countries, SIPs are used out of financial necessity due to insufficient public budget to support certain social programs. Singapore is fortunate to be in a stronger fiscal position thanks to our stable political system and a government which has been planning long-term and spending prudently within our means. We will continue to study different ways of funding and working with NGOs. Ultimately, regardless of the funding arrangement, what we need is collective action and strong partnerships between government, NGOs, industry players, communities and individuals to win the war on diabetes. Another important area is to encourage early and regular health screening. For diabetes, the current arrangement is for Singaporeans aged 40 and above to go for screening every three years. Madam, age is only one factor. There are also other factors such as family history, body mass index, and so on. Learning from the experience of, of other countries such as the US, UK, Australia, and Finland, MOH will roll out the diabetes risk assessment tool from September 1st this year.